This has been quite an experience for us the last couple of weeks. You know, we're out working in the community on a daily basis, getting people registered, talking to folks about issues, and all of a sudden we're seeing our work on the national news in the most aggressive terms possible. We need to know the full extent of that relationship. We need to know the full extent of Senator Obama's relationship with ACORN, who is now on the verge of maybe perpetrating one of the greatest frauds in voter history in this country, maybe destroying a fabric of democracy. Same front outfit organization that your campaign gave $832,000 for, for quote, lighting and, and site selection. So all of these things need to be examined, right. of course. Okay, so, um, wait, yeah, let me rewrite this. They're trying to say that we registered all these fraudulent cars of people to persuade the vote a certain way, but if the cars are fraudulent, they're not swayed in a certain way because the people don't even exist if they're fraudulent. Um, so how can the vote be swayed a different way from people that, that don't even exist? So if there are fraudulent cars out there, it wouldn't help or hurt. Not, I don't want to say hurt, it would hurt because it's fraudulent, but it wouldn't you know, help either side during the election because they're they're completely false. Well that's why we try to call them verified cards. So at some point um, people who were doing fraudulent cards, if they may have went through a phone book and just put people's names and phone numbers, once we call that card back and the person say no, you know, no, I never filled out a voter registration card, then of course we could figure out, you know, it was probably the worker that was you know, filling out fraudulent information because we confirm with the person on the card. In many states, the law is you do have to submit every single card. Our protocol is that we do hand in every single card. Even if you feel it's fraudulent? Even if we feel it's fraudulent or inappropriate. Um, I think, you know, there have been a couple cases, oh, well, Mickey Mouse is somebody. But the truth is, there's, um, there's a registered voter, or excuse me, there's a resident in Detroit by the name of Mickey Mouse. And we make, our, make the jobs of the clerks as easy as possible by separating cards that we see as fraudulent or problematic or incomplete from the rest of the cards. But we absolutely don't want to take the chance of not submitting a card that we feel like has a possibility, even if it's remote, of being a legal card, because then we're disenfranchising a voter. And that goes against everything that we're trying to do. He's going to call and find out what the problem is. I gotta get a tip with uh, Clarice. Clarice. Who? Clarice. Clarice. This was the first time I was involved in the voter registration program, um, and people just seemed to be really excited about getting the opportunity to vote. Um, so, you know, new voters, young voters were excited, or older people who may have never registered to vote at all before. So, you know, I would look at voter registration cards and I would see people who were, you know, 65, 70 years old who were registering for the first time, and I would think, wow, that's really odd that someone never registered to vote before. Um, but I was just happy that people, you know, found it important uh, to get registered and hopefully they'll actually go out and vote on November the 4th. I think we're just so proud of the work that we've done in Michigan, over 200,000 voters and around the country, over a million voters. And there's gonna be a historic amount of people that are gonna participate in this election, young voters under 30, people of color, first time voters, and that's what's something to be excited about. This is so we can know to get them to put it on back to <laughs>